Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm uh, going to be doing a full painting tutorial this week. I'm painting one of the figures from the Blackstone Fortress. Once I find my details, <laughs> it's going to be the lovely robot, the U R something. <laughs> U R zero two five. And as you can see, I've already based him up black. This is another commission piece, uh, similar to the ones that I'd already done before. And uh, this is going to be painted up with a grey armour style. Uh, and then effectively, uh, some maybe some silver weapons. Not going to be too overly complicated. Um, but it is going to look awesome when we've done. So first colour we're going to use is Mechanica Standard Grey. And we're going to give that pretty much all over the entire model. Trying to avoid the weapons as best we can. He is going to be very dark, sort of we're going to build up to a different grey. I'm not doing a traditional blue that uh, the rest of the world seems to be doing. I know you do that with some nylon oxide over white. It seems quite simple to do, but I'm going for a more direct, old school approach. Ooh. colour we're going to be using is going to be Dawnstone and we're going to be mainly doing that on the body and legs and the backpack we're going to do that maybe on the lower part of the arms but we're going to keep the head and the shoulder pads separate we're going to be doing them a different colour um, so let's get cracking a little bit of administratum grey which I'm actually going to dry brush on as well uh, but that's just been added into the pot I'm not cleaning the pot out I'm just using the rest of the dawnstone with that colour and that's just going to do sort of little spots on the highlights <laughs> I've masked off the shoulder pads and I've painted them black and I'm going to now hit them with some Dark Reaper uh, just to try and cause a bit of a shade on the actual uh, the shoulder pads and then we're going to actually cover these shoulder pads. We're going to mask them off with some 2mm um, masking tape. This is quite thin, you should be able to find it in your local hobby shop. So I've masked off the areas I'm wanting to now paint with Avalon Sunset. I'm also going to use a bit of a uh, shield here because I don't want to get it on the legs or anywhere else for that matter. I'm only wanting the paint to be on the black areas. Right, here goes.
still keeping the straps on. We're now going to hit it with some, oh, that was a nice reflection, some Uriel Yellow. Just at a bit of a distance at an angle, just to try and get the shoulder pad a nice rounded edge and feel. I keep knocking my camera on the knees, don't you? Chevrons, highlighted chevrons at that as well. Alright, uh, so we've got the grey body going, we've got some chevron shoulder pads in there. Uh, we've got to have some silver coming in soon. But I am going to want to do his power fist red. That sort of claw there, I want to do it a red claw. And the helmet, I'm going to have to do it white because of course everyone else is doing it white. And if I'm honest it looks pretty badass. Uh, but it's depending on what base colour I'm going to want it. So I think I'm going to go for Adonistratum Grey and then I'm going to airbrush the skull white on top of it to make sure that it's got a nice pattern and colour. Right then guys, so I'm not actually going to go the uh, traditional route. Uh, I'm going to wet blend up on the helmet. So if you don't know how to do a wet palette, I've got a video there showing you. And effectively, I'm just going to paint the helmet in, um, and I'm going to blend it up to the top. as it were. This for me is going to be painted corn red up to um, not evil sun scarlet. So I'm just going to wet blend this again like I did with the previous one like I've just done with the head and we'll take it from there. entirety of the arm, the ammo hoppers, uh, the claw here and any little bits that you possibly see they're going to be now painted up with silver. As you can see I've already gone ahead and hit the uh, silver with known oil and uh, what I'm going to be doing now is just to go into the red just going to use some troll slayer orange and I'm just going to edge highlight the red adapter I've also gone back and I've done this circle red as well to stand out I'm going to give that an edge highlight as well. Again, just using the wet palette, making sure that everything's nice and smooth. So now I'm actually going to go back. 
back to the armor. Still waiting for the uh, normal armor to dry, as it, you do. But I'm gonna dry brush some Amnestrat and Grey into the armor plates. This is to pick out the extreme edges. Now, we've already done a little bit of a Oh, this sort of highlighted this with Admiral Grey, but just doing this just picks out little bits that wouldn't normally get picked out with an airbrush. I always like to finish off figures if I can. A little bit of a dry brush just to pick out little details. Not destroying what we've done. Just picking out some edges. And people say it makes it a little unrealistic, but it's a miniature at the end of the day. It's not real. In my head. See, just picks it out just a little bit and just lifts the colouring that we've already done to the next level. Now, excuse the fact that it's not positioned, I actually didn't build the figure. As you can see, there's some pipe in here that's black, and I'm just going to mix some admin grey with some black, and I'm just going to put it on just to show you what it looks like. As you can see, all I've done is kind of scrape down it, uh, just to try and catch little ridges. Nothing special, just to try and give it a tiny bit of a highlight. I don't want to draw too much attention to it, of course, because it's away from the figure. But uh, I haven't built mine yet, but apparently these actually are quite difficult to put together. So next, I'm going to be doing some lenses, primarily this one here, this one here and the lens across the face. These two are flashlights, so I'm going to do them like I normally would do a flashlight on a vehicle. I'm going to go from Cantor Blue up to Teclas Blue. Now I'm going to do... Using the wet palette. that is going to require a thin brush. Now I've already gone and done the second stage for that. So what I've got is a mix of the Canto and the Teclas. And I'm just going to rub that in. Oops, I'm not on camera. And then straight Teclas. Just on the edges. Not massive screen, so you don't look too much. Just put a big tackles in here, just to show off the face. So the gold next. All that's going to do is basically just be put onto his chest, and then once that's dry, I'm going to put some Reefing Flash Red over the top and leave that. It's such a small detail. Don't really want to draw too much attention to it, so of course I'm just going to do a little tiny bit. So while I'm waiting for the gold to dry, the silver Norn Oil is nearly dry now, so I'm going to get to that part next. But I'm going to do a recess shade now, using Norn Oil on the actual grey armour. Um, this is just mainly some of the final points. I'm going to use a wet palette just to sort of thin it out a little. And I'm wanting a very, very fine tip. And I'm just running it across sort of recess surfaces just to try and give it a little bit more definition. So we've done the dry brush, we've done the airbrush, we've done the dry brush and now we're just doing the recess shade. You don't have to do recess shade all the time on your airbrush. But certain colours like for me whites and greys sometimes need it, just as your best judgment call though when you're actually painting the figure.
Okay, so I've done the recess shed and we've painted the uh, Aquila on his chest uh, with the Reekland, Reekland flesh, uh, flesh shade just to give it the shade. And now I'm going to go to the silver. We're going to dry brush the silver using some of my favourite paints, Necron Compound. I do like this paint. I don't know why, it's just one of my favourites to use. So it's a dry paint and yes, I did shake it. Yeah. Let's get your dry brush and away you go. You don't dry brush any colour, just dry brush silver. Okay, now here's one of the next steps. Not a lot of people might be able to do. But if you can, try and I'll try and get the colours as best as you possibly can to you. I'm going to use Flash Wash. Now this is a very old Games Workshop paint. Flash Wash is very, very, as you can see, it's a very watery brown. So you could probably get away with mixing possibly like a, a Doom Ball with some Lamium Medium to make it quite thin. And then, paint it across. Now, is it a very unique metal? It's a metal I like to use on a lot of figures. I'm trying like a bronzy colour. The next thing I'm going to do before I start doing any sort of like um, shading or any sort of dirtying or any flashlights, I'm going to put a transfer on. So we've got here an old school number three. Don't know if you can see that properly on camera. Um, but that's going to be put onto his shoulder pad. So he's going to have a number three on there. Now, how I do this, me personally, I just get my kitchen roll dropper, put a couple of oh, drops of water down, but don't attach it, ah, that went disastrous, but eventually that will come off and that will slide onto my transfer, now while I'm waiting for that to sort of melt down, I've got micro set, that's going to go onto the shoulder pad where the transfer is going to go. Multiple different ways of doing this. A lot of people like to put a gloss varnish down first. I, depending on what I'm doing, uh, if it's just flat surface, I'm not bothered. If it's a circular surface, then yes, yeah, so you're going to need to. That's just going to need a bit more water. Probably going to need a bit longer. Okay, so the transfer is free and moving. Take it off. Pardon, Paul. Just gonna put it on there. Like that. Just a little bit. A bit more set on. Let that dry. And then I put a bit of micro sole over the top. But when it's a flat surface, you tend to be able to get away with a lot of transfers. It's when it's curved that you tend to have a problem. Space between shoulder pads, I'm looking at you. Now, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go back to Mechanical Standard Grey. And I'm be sat there going, why are you going back to Mechanical Standard Grey? Well, I'm going to start my weathering and my battering. What I'm going to do on the armour, sometimes really good at covering mistakes, which is why I didn't cover this earlier. You can always paint it over. And if you just paint it, but not much, tiny bits of the original colour, like a standard grey, look start. Just a bit. 
and then we're going to come back in with some silver and we're going to paint those up you can if you want to you can draw the line you can uh, use a sponge but because I don't want a lot of uh, damage as it were on this one I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do hand painted scratches keep your paints nice and thin Tap it randomly in those corners. Not too much. And even do it to the power fist. I keep saying power fist, I don't think it is a power fist, but you can do it to that point. You just go back in with the red. And then you can come at it. Little tiny bits of the Yeah, he puts himself in. Now, I'm coming back in with Stormhorst. Uh, big tradition. Go for a lighter silver. Well, if you don't get them all, basically chipped it away to the primer and the undercoat underneath. along nicely. I didn't want it as great massive chunks. I wanted subtle. Give some more here. Even some new transfer area. There it's done. The reason I like stone horse is it is actually quite thin, so if I do mess up. scratches to your silver not lots just a little bit but it still works Not a lot of damage, just a little chipping, a little mark. Right, let's get on to some light, some, uh, some weathering. So first off we're going to create some soot and dust. This is going to be using 
this one. This is black from Game Inc. And, uh, it's pretty cool. You can just use it straight from the tub. Straight into your airbrush. I'm going to put a drop needed. And not very heavy, quite light. And you can get yourself a nice little bit. And the reason I'm using it is because I'm wanting some mucky vents at the back. is going to be the lights, the search light and the front light that is actually got on the front of his body. I'm going to be doing a mix, I wish the light was intense, I'm going to be doing a mix of, I'm going to be doing a mix of a flash gets yellow with skull white and the idea of this is just to give this a little tiny drop, just a little bit, a little bit of a flare effect around the edge just to give an illusion that this is a working light. So to finish the paint job off, I've just hit it with a couple of layers of mecha varnish just to give it a bit of a sheen. Because it's a droid, normally I use a dull varnish. Um, oh, I wanted a bit of sheen in this one. So there's uh, a couple of layers of MAC. Right, that's it. So, don't, I'm not doing the base uh, because, of course, the commission required me just to paint the figure. And the commissionee is wanting to paint the base himself. So I'm not going to Right, that's brilliant. I've done and dusted within one couple of hour session really uh, for me and of course it will just be about 10 20 seconds when i speed it up for you guys uh, but thanks for watching please like share subscribe hit that notification button if you are wanting to see more i'm going to try and get some exclusive content up on my website rootstem.co.uk and just to try and see if i can get uh, uh, some more stuff for our luscious members uh, it's just three pounds per calendar month or of course nearly four dollars if you're american i'm um, not quite sure what it is in australia um, but if you are wanting to sign up it's rootstem.co.uk uh, sign up through there the website's built on the wix so it usually starts everything nice and secure you've got no worries about the details and you can sign up using paypal or credit card thanks very much for watching guys and we'll see you next time